Morning, Sarah Lee. Morning, Julie. Morning, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Late. <laughs> Morning, Kirsty. Kirsty to be sitting in different rooms via two different devices. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Isn't it lovely that we don't need a building to be the house of the Lord? In a moment, I'm going to hand over to, to Ernie, who will start with prayer and our first song. But first, could I just mention, first of all, the zoom life group on wednesday which will be led by ernie at 7 30 in the evening we'll send the link out for that probably on tuesday evening and um before that um tomorrow we'll send out a wee video clip for people to take a look at before wednesday evening um i see that the videos are getting looked at quite a lot um not so many of you joining on Wednesday evening. I, maybe it's not a good time for everybody, but it would be great if more of you could join us for that. It's only a short time, and uh, yeah, we have a really good discussion and a, a wee bit of a time of encouragement for us all. Um, can I also mention that on Saturday morning, Ernie will be leading us again in our monthly prayer breakfast. It will be a Zoom prayer breakfast. You can get a bite to eat and... Um, you, you can sit and we can we can pray together and again enjoy some fellowship. Morning, Kevin. It's good to see you managed to get in there. Kevin's been having a wee bit of difficulty getting into these services, um, but he's here with us now. Can I also mention I forgot on the um, weekly update that I sent out. I for forgot to change. It says that next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, but of course it's not. This is Pentecost Sunday. And it's, uh, we're so delighted today to um, just celebrate the, the, what's often known as the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit poured out over the disciples that first Pentecost. And um, next Sunday, as I say, not Pentecost Sunday, it will in fact be the first Sunday of the month and we'll be sharing communion together. So please, can you remember to have um, some bread and some wine or some juice ready for that if you want to participate in our time of communion together. So that's next Sunday morning at 10.30. I'm going to pass over now to Ernie, who's going to lead us in prayer. Good morning, everyone, on this Pentecost Sunday. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, as we gather this morning, we celebrate that wonderful occasion of Pentecost when your promises of Easter were fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. Father, we, we give you thanks this morning and praise. And we ask this morning that we can come to worship you afresh in our hearts, that we can push aside any worries, any fears that might be preventing us from getting close to you. Lord, will you open our hearts that we can receive and give in a way that's acceptable to you. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit is active throughout the Old Testament as well as the New. 
Indeed, he appears in the first two verses of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters from Genesis 1. So the Holy Spirit is very evident, and none more so in the Old Testament than in David. It was one of David's long dreams, one of his passions to have the Lord's people have a place to worship God and to remember his covenant with them. And after long months and struggles, the ark had finally arrived in Jerusalem. And David, in great excitement and thanks and praise for the Lord, leaped and danced. He didn't care what he could have looked like. His main concern was to show thanks and worship to the God who had blessed him. We read, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. How amazing it is to worship in this way, without reservations, without limits, without a care in the world except to show proper worship to the one who deserves everything we have to give. Well, may the Lord bless us all with faith and the heart to be able to dance as David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing as David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing as David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. I will clap, I will laugh, I will clap as David sang. I will sing, 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 I will sing,
Thank you, Ernie. Thank you. I've got a short passage here from John's Gospel. It's John 16, beginning to read at verse 7. John 16, beginning at verse 7. It explains, in this passage, Jesus explains our need for his Holy Spirit. Very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because God, but because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Okay. <laughs>
Holy Spirit, breathe on each one of us this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit within us, given so that we can continue your work on earth. O oh, Holy Spirit, fill us this morning that we would be more effective for you as we serve in our own community, that you would pour out through us streams of the living water of your grace and love. Spirit, saturate our souls um, and renew us with your gifts this morning that we, the Daptist Jews, with eyes, ears, hands and heart in our community, wherever you may lead us in the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Father, your word tells us that we should bear with one another with all humility gentleness and with patience through love striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace build us up lord as one body and in one spirit that even as we meet online and maintain the required social distances we would continue to dwell together in unity lord jesus Thank you that through your Holy Spirit you gave the gift of power and forgiveness. Lord, help us to use that gift wisely, that we would bring your grace, compassion and reconciliation to a broken world, starting right here where we are. Father, we pray for all who are sick, and those who are shielding to protect them from COVID. We pray for our health and social care staff and all who care for loved ones at home. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, they would know healing, protection and fullness of health. We thank you, Lord, for the religious freedom in this country which allows us to worship you and witness and share Jesus. We pray for those who suffer for their faith, and especially for those in countries such as North Korea and India, where Christians are routinely persecuted and are suffering even more as a result of prejudice during lockdown arrangements. And your word in Hebrews 13 tells us to remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Father, we pray for all who fear for their safety. We remember the victims of domestic violence. Some people are really struggling still with the pressure of lockdown. We recall areas of the world where there has been civil unrest and war. We pray especially this weekend for the cities of the United States as unrest continues following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And Father, we remember this time especially those churches that seek to bring a spirit of reconciliation, that they would find that right balance between speaking out against injustice and sowing the seeds of your love and peace and understanding and we remember especially father god those in the city of philadelphia some who may even be joining us for this service this morning either now or later we just pray for that city lord which had fires blazing the other night we just pray that your will be done in jesus name Father, keep us in your spirit of truth, that we would be people who disregard fake news and gossip and always seek to witness to your truth, love and forgiveness. And now, just in a few moments of silence, let us just pray for our own families, 
and our friends, or for any matter that the Lord has laid on our heart this morning. We bring all these prayers before you, Father God, confident that you hear the prayers brought to you in faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. to say that this morning our worship has been brought to us by Ernie it's been brought to us by the Boland family with additional um, bits from Stacy all the way from Warsaw by the wonders of technology and I think Melissa from somewhere down that way as well has been joining in and you'll be hearing her voice on its own later as she sings a solo item and, um, and now we're going to be led by John house he will lead us safe
to shore. Well, as we've heard today, is Pentecost Sunday, the day which is often called the birthday of the church, the day when we celebrate receiving the Holy Spirit. We're taking a break today from our study of John's Gospel, but our reading this morning, which is going to be a dramatised reading from the book of Acts, describes an act which Jesus has already foretold several times in John's Gospel. Do you remember the woman at the well and how Jesus told her that the water that he would one day give would become in believers a spring of water welling up to eternal life? Then a couple of weeks back, Jesus announced in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. In Acts 1, before Jesus ascended to heaven, he instructed his disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait until they received the gift promised by his heavenly Father. And he reminded them that he had previously spoken of this. It was another ten days before Pentecost, when everyone else would be gathered together in Jerusalem to celebrate yet another Jewish religious festival. And it must have seemed like a really long wait. We've all done a lot of waiting just lately, haven't we? Waiting for the lockdown rules to ease. If you're shielding, you're still waiting even to be allowed to leave your house. Others have the freedom now to get in our cars. And don't we feel privileged to be allowed to drive just five miles to take a walk? We've been waiting to be allowed to meet with a family member or friend and must still wait before we can go and see those more than five miles away. And children must wait until August before they can go back to school. Waiting is hard, isn't it? And quite a few people have got impatient and ignored or stretched the rules. But that quirky, anxious bunch of disciples were obedient and they waited together in Jerusalem as Jesus had instructed. They trusted with eager anticipation that God would do as he had promised. And their patience was rewarded. The Holy Spirit came upon them and they were empowered by God. They were set alight spiritually and people all around them witnessed one of the most amazing and dramatic events in history. Let's have our reading. It's based on Acts chapter 2. I'm in the crowd. It was Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, 50 days after Passover. So Jerusalem was bustling, full of people come to make their offering of first fruits as thanks to God for bringing us home after years of wandering in the wilderness. And I was there too. We were all together, us disciples, inside away from the crowds, when suddenly the whole house was filled with the sound of rushing wind. It was terrifying, shocking, violent. And then there was fire, flames flicker, flickering above our heads, a tongue of flame hovering above each of us like a shimmering bird. And then it was as if that fire breathed above us. The fire that breathed above us suddenly blazed within us. God's Holy Spirit lived in us and moved in us and we found ourselves filled with new and sudden knowledge. I began to speak. We all did. Every language under heaven came pouring out of our mouths. We rushed outside. All around us people were staring, open-mouthed. But if you think that they were shocked, it was nothing to what they were feeling. 
<laughs> Suddenly I was a linguist and not only that, I knew what to say. All this power, God's power, was pouring through me. I threw my arms in the air and I laughed with the wonder of it. No wonder people thought that we were drunk. That's what I thought. <laughs> Disgraceful. I thought totally blotto at this time in the morning, shouting, waving their arms about, fighting drunk, I thought, and I decided to give them a wide berth. But then, out of the jumble of sounds they were making, I caught a phrase, God's deeds of power, and I stared. It was in my language, my own language. I'm from Cyrene, and since when did Galileans speak my language? There were Parthians in the crowd, and Elamites, Mesopotamians, Egyptians. You get the picture. The world and his wife were there. And these men, these country bumpkin Jews from the sticks of Galilee, were speaking to all of them in their own languages. It was amazing. I mean, since when did uneducated men like that get to be experts in dozens of languages? But they weren't drunk. I realised that. Well, not drunk on wine at any rate. The crowd were pretty stirred up by what we were doing and that's when Peter spoke, reciting the prophecy of Joel. In the last days, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show signs in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone, 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 everyone who calls on, on the name, name of, of the Lord, Lord shall be saved. Thank you. Do you remember how that motley crew of disciples that followed Jesus all ran away and hid when he was put on trial and crucified. And yet they were completely transformed as the Holy Spirit fell upon them that day as they celebrated Pentecost. No longer cowards, but speaking boldly. And from that crowd gathered in Jerusalem for the festival, three thousand became believers in Jesus that day because of what they had seen and heard. Do you believe in the transforming power of the Holy Spirit? I don't mean, I don't just mean the events that happened 2,000 years ago. Do you believe in the transforming power of God's Holy Spirit today. Tragically, over several centuries, Christians began to believe that the gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit died out with the last apostles. And some still believe that and view anyone who speaks of being full of the Holy Spirit with some suspicion. They believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they'll be celebrating Pentecost Sunday today as a historic event and the birthday of the church. But they don't see God's Holy Spirit as somebody who is as involved in their lives as he was in the lives of New Testament believers. They refer to him as it, as if he is some kind of ethereal power or influence rather than the Spirit of God and third person of the Trinity. But when Jesus spoke of the advocate or helper in that passage I read earlier from John 16, the Greek word used 
in early manuscripts was parakletos, which as well as meaning advocate, speaks of the Holy Spirit's comfort, protection, counsel and guidance. God sent his Holy Spirit to live within each one of us in order to guide us in the ways of God's truth, to equip us, to comfort us, counsel us individually and to build up his church. And don't we just need his comfort, counsel and guidance in these times? How wonderful it is to think that the same Holy Spirit who lived in people like Peter, John and Paul lives in us. In fact, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Thank you, Lord. The same Holy Spirit who guided the hands and thoughts of those who wrote scriptures is with us. And he guides the hands and thoughts still of all who will let him. Thank you, Lord. For several centuries, though, churches taught that all the miraculous gifts of the Spirit had passed away when the last apostles died. And until the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles in 1906, that had become the prevailing position on God's Holy Spirit in most Christian denominations. But following that, and other revivals around the world since that, including last century, the Hebridean revival here in Scotland. News of the reality of the Holy Spirit in these last days has spread once more across the world. And in the UK, particularly since the introduction of the Alpha Course in the 1990s by Holy Trinity Church, an Anglican church in London, God's Holy Spirit has been embraced by more and more Christians across most of the mainstream denominations in the UK as co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son. More and more Christians have discovered for themselves in the last few years that the promise of the Holy Spirit is for all who believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They've discovered for themselves that God's Holy Spirit is not some intangible, mystical experience, nor is he just an injection of spiritual adrenaline when we need a lift. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is a definite and distinct experience of an infilling of us by part of God himself. You really do know when it's happened and whether it's in the book of Acts or in so many Christian testimonies you can read hundreds of them the Holy Spirit is a very special gift for all who have truly repented and believed the gospel and have a genuine desire to live according to the teaching of Jesus I had been a Christian believer for many years before I experienced this in all its fullness. Like so many, I've been conditioned by my early church experience not to expect to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I was also in a personal situation where I was really struggling to forgive somebody who I needed to forgive. This was hindering my faith so much, I went to the elders of my church for prayer and counselling. They helped me reach a place where I could forgive as Jesus had taught us to forgive. And as I did so, and as they prayed with me, I experienced God's Holy Spirit pour through me in a new way. I even found myself praying in tongues. And then a few days later, something happened which would normally have brought back to mind all my past feelings of hurt unforgiveness and anger and I suddenly realised that I'd been set free from all of that. 
letting go of all that all of that and giving it over to god had enabled his holy spirit to take the place of all that stuff but here's the point being filled with god's holy spirit isn't a one-off event we must be open to his continual refilling because of lockdown it's a long time since i filled my car up with diesel i think it was probably the middle of march last time i went to a filling station normally i know fine that if i don't keep the car topped up every week sooner or later i'll be running on empty and it's exactly the same with god's holy spirit we must be continually open to being filled again and again and again otherwise we'll soon be running on empty as i was preparing this God gave me a picture of myself in my teenage years, a long time ago, filling up an old car. Who remembers the earliest self-service petrol pumps? If the fuel rushed back up the filler tube, you'd get your hand covered in petrol. And when I first started driving, that happened quite a few times. It doesn't happen anymore because fuel pumps have sensors that cut the fuel off each time it rushes back and when it's full. So there's no risk of overfilling the car. In fact, some modern pumps are so fast and so sensitive that when I fill my Mariva, if I squeeze the trigger all the way, it's constantly cutting off. With God's Holy Spirit, our desire should be filled to be filled to overflowing. But we're British. We've been conditioned to maintain some kind of decorum, especially in church. We don't succumb to things that might disrupt that, do we? And some of us seem to have senses that cause us to resist anything that might upset our need for decorum. And that's cutting off the flow every time God attempts to pour his spirit out over us. I was feeling so strongly as I prepared this that God is wanting us to hear something this morning. He's telling us to bypass those decorum maintenance sensors. He's saying to us that far too often they're cutting off the flow of his Holy Spirit when we most need it. He wants to fill us to overflowing and we're shutting off. We're shutting off before he's anywhere near to filling us. And he spoke and we sang earlier of dancing and singing as David did. I wonder how David would have felt about UK church decorum. I can think of quite a few churches where he might have been advised that we, we can't do that here. And perhaps been signposted to the nearest church with a reputation for being happy clappy. I think we might even have been a little taken aback even here at the community church if David had come and danced with all his might. It's quite a while since I've seen anyone in church dance with all their might. But feel free if that's how God's Spirit moves you. Seriously though, when the Spirit moves you, don't resist him. Don't resist him. Don't dismiss the experience as mere sentiment or emotion either. Don't get cynical or critical when you see others overflowing with spiritual expression when God's Holy Spirit is flowing. Let him open the eyes of your heart and receive more of him. Savour him. 
enjoy him and let him equip you for the task that God has prepared for you and the circumstances you'll encounter along life's road. Romans 15 and verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Did you get that? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to swap metaphors for a moment. I would usually use water to illustrate the need to be filled to overflowing. But we have too many electrical items here this morning to risk that. So you're going to have to put up with birdseed. <laughs> have we got the birdseed ready? We have. Right. I'll maybe pick this up first of all. Uh, you're going to have to lift it fairly high. Can you reach that high? <laughs> Yes, that's right. Do you know uh, there's a pencil in there? Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> because if we want to be filled with the Spirit, first we must empty ourselves of anything that's in the way. We do that through repentance and asking God's forgiveness. So Alison, could you make sure that that, is, that jar is clean and empty, please? It's clean, it's not empty. Well, you better empty it then. <laughs> and you can put it back. What, the pencil? No, the, the jar. <laughs> Dispose of the cup. <laughs> What's she like? <laughs> right, now we would like some bird seed, please. Would you, we, we, because once we've emptied ourselves of all that gets in the way of the Holy Spirit, we're ready to be filled. Can you fill that up, please? Sorry, I'm going to lift it a bit so people can see. There we are. Oh, filling. <laughs> ah. Is it good to the top? Yes, please. Right to the top. That's you what. Straight. That's what full means. Like that? Yes, that will do. Ooh, the fine. Ooh, like, ooh, oh. Ooh. We should have practiced this earlier, shouldn't we? <laughs> this, this particular container, as you can see, is rather an odd shape. You see that? It's actually for growing a bulb in it. Um, but we all come in different shapes and sizes, don't we? But if we're willing, God knows how to fill us with his Holy Spirit until our contents conform exactly with the shape of his design for us. Now, Alison, would you pour some of that out, please? Into the bowl. Just into the bowl will do, yeah. That's it. Thank you. How much? Yes, that would be fine. Um, because as we use the fuel of the Holy Spirit to cope with whatever life throws at us, we become less full. And sometimes... We're pouring some of it out for others as we produce, you can do, pour out some more now, as we produce the spiritual fruit of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, gentleness and self-control. And so we have to come, no, 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 now you can, now you can fill it again. Oh, goodness uh -huh. sake. <laughs> but don't overfill it yet. <laughs> I assume I have to use the scoop. Yep. yep. That's it. You see, we need to be refueled, and God does that in so many ways, but mainly just if we ask him. It can happen in church. It can happen at home. It can happen out on a walk, and it happens mostly during our quiet times of prayer and reading God's word. Sometimes, though, we're too full of our own agenda, God can't fill us when that happens. So we might experience a time of pressure as he presses down on what he's already given us. Could you just, if you put it in there and just press down on the top of it. Right, now, 
And the other thing that um, God, God sometimes does is he shakes us. Um, we need to tap that on a hard surface. Um, try the table over here. Yeah, that, that's working. That's working. Good, good. And as God presses down on us and shakes us, he can refill us even more. <laughs> and this time he can do it to overflowing. Although we've already experienced that, haven't we? <laughs> that's it full. Yeah, that's it full. And now it's overflowing. There we are. I think we've made the point. <laughs> Enough on the floor. Yeah, that's enough. Thank you very much to my glamorous assistant. You see, Jesus was talking about the need to be forgiving when he spoke in Luke's gospel of God giving to us in good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. But the same is true of the gift of his Holy Spirit. Don't you want to be an overflow for God? God is pouring out his Holy Spirit and he wants to pour it out more and more. And wherever the good news of the gospel is preached, he's looking for people to respond in order that more streams of living water, not birdseed, streams of living water will pour out across this spiritually dry nation. Streams that will refresh renew, restore, change and transform people, whatever their shape, communities, even whole nations, according to the measure in which people are willing to respond to him. And here's an interesting point. <coughs> the onlookers might have found the spirit-filled behaviour of the disciples a bit strange. 3,000 people had joined them by the end of that day because they saw something that looked and sounded completely authentic. And as people saw how they lived their lives and cared for one another, Acts 2 verse 47 says that the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Churches grow and flourish when people see the Holy Spirit at work in the lives of those who believe and trust in Jesus. <coughs> <coughs> Let's open our hearts this morning, our minds, our whole selves to all that God has for us today. Let's empty ourselves of anything that might get in the way of his infilling Holy Spirit. Turn off those decorum maintenance sensors, get rid of them and invite him in this morning to do all that he wants to do through you and me, his people, redeemed through the sacrifice of Jesus. Shall we pray? Come, Holy Spirit, rushing wind of God, descend on each person watching this live stream this morning. As we empty ourselves, Lord, we invite you to fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit. Perhaps you'd like to just hold out your hands. Just say to him in your heart, in your mind, Lord, come, Holy Spirit, come. Fall afresh on me, fall afresh on me, Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me, Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh.
Jesus to send his Holy Spirit upon you now. Maybe you've been feeling run down. Maybe you've been feeling that you've, you're running on empty. Maybe you've been running on empty for quite a long time. Perhaps right now you realise that you've allowed your decorum maintenance senses to get in the way of you receiving all that God wants you to receive. Perhaps you've never really been completely full of his Holy Spirit because of that. Just ask him to fill you, to fill you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill me anew. when the Holy Spirit comes upon us we just feel a wonderful warm sense something within us just knows that we're experiencing the fullness of God thank you Father God for your Holy Spirit we thank you for all your goodness in Jesus name Amen think of a song of the goodness of God. This starts with a wee solo from Melissa. You might just want to listen.
Father God, for all your goodness. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, sent that we may become the best possible versions of ourselves, that we would become Christ-like, that we would become the people that you have called us to be, that we would become your hands, your eyes and ears, your heart for this community and beyond. Now let's just say together the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and um, Gail is going to play us out with a lovely tune. It's the, the Lord's My Shepherd and um, we look forward to seeing you next week at our communion service. If not before, uh, please, come, if you can, come along to one of our Zoom meetings either on Wednesday evening or Saturday morning. But if you can't make those, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning for our communion service. And don't forget your bread and either some wine or some juice. Bye for now. Lovely to see all your little thank yous at yeah. the end. Uh, we, we appreciate it and um, we, we thank you for joining us yeah. as well. Oh. You've seen that Kyleo is yeah. watching us. We've been praying for your oh, city, Kyleo. We really oh, pray. Yeah. We pray for Philadelphia and all the cities of the US yeah. at this time. Yeah. And um, we just, our thoughts are with you. minister in that city. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye.